Good evening, lovely listeners, and welcome back to Raven Reads. I'm Raven, and this is the 21st installment of Night Marathon. For this particular video, I wanted to tell some Bigfoot and Yeti stories. I know that some of you really have a distaste for this particular topic, but guess what? It's one of 90 videos this month. <laughs> so. Don't worry, in a few hours there will be something else for you. For those of us who do enjoy these stories, I have invited a very special guest. Swamp Dweller kindly agreed to narrate a story for this video, and I am sure you guys will enjoy that. If by some chance you haven't heard of Swamp Dweller, he is an awesome narrator who posts some really amazing content. I will link his channel down below in the video description. Be sure to head on over to his channel and subscribe if you haven't already at the end of this video. As always, links to everything will be in the video description. Be sure to like this video if you do, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring the bell to summon videos all month long. We've got 90 of them this month, and you wouldn't want to miss one, would you? Without further ado, you know what time it is. Grab your gear, get a beverage of choice, get comfortable, and get ready to take another journey into the night. My grandparents, along with my grandma's sister and her husband, would go to Ontario, Canada every year for a fishing vacation. The area in Ontario is about 200 miles north of International Falls, Minnesota. During these vacations, they would go park by the garbage dump at dusk and watch the bears come out. Sadly, the local bear population had been reduced to eating garbage due to the presence of humans. Being from the south side of Chicago, it was fun and interesting for my grandparents, particularly my grandma. One evening, my grandma and my Aunt Beth were parked on the rim of the dump and sitting in Beth's car, looking down at the bears in the dump below. While my grandma sees one bear on his hind legs, he turns and makes eye contact with her. To her dismay, she realized that this was not a bear. It was Bigfoot. He looked at me with such evil in his eyes, she said. She screamed at Beth to start the car and to get out of there. Beth, hearing the tone of my grandma's voice, did what she said without asking any questions until they were a safe distance away. After they got out of there, Beth pulled over and my grandma told her what she saw. My grandma passed away in 1993. She was a wonderful person and had an open mind to what is now referred to as high strangeness. I think that's where I get my interest in it. I keep hearing howls and human-like whoops near the area where I'm camping in Utah. There's a lot of strange activity, such as strange smells around the tents, like a dirty wild animal, noises, and even items being thrown and damaged. I am convinced that it is not a bear, and so are my friends. But we're unsure as to what to do, since the activity seems to be more frequent and sort of aggressive. The dogs act up by barking and whimpering on certain nights, as if there were a larger animal nearby. There's also the occasional feeling that we're being watched during the night, and some of us have had rocks thrown at us while walking out down between the two hills. These two hills kind of make a small canyon by a gorge. We have flattened the soil where we think it is at night, hoping to get tracks, but so far we've gotten nothing. We have read about bears, but we have come to the conclusion that this is not a bear. It could be nothing, but I am certain that something is not right about whatever is stalking us. One of my friends just reported that while collecting dry firewood, he saw a large ape 
with shaggy red-brown fur, standing at a good eight feet tall. He said it was far up a hill, kind of crouched, observing him from above. Yeah, we're pretty sure it's not a bear. I'm going to try to make this as short as possible, because this was a long trip. I do not know if it's necessary to go into too much detail about the whole trip itself, so I'm just going to give a little backstory and really go into the detail with the meat of the story. My best friend and I were around nine years old at the time this story takes place. One day she calls me and asks if I want to go inner tubing with her and her mom. It was not actual inner tubing. Her mom went to the store and bought us some floaties and dropped us off at a national park about 10 minutes away from where we live. Yes, you read that right. Her mom dropped two nine-year-old girls off at a national park in the middle of the woods. Turns out, my friend only said her mom was coming so my parents would let me go. Anyways, the plan was to inner tube down this river, which led into town, then walk to her dad's house and call her mom to pick us up. The trip goes alright. Some parts of the river were too shallow, so we had to stand and walk through the water, holding our inner tubes until we got to a deep enough spot to float again. It was super fun and relaxing being all alone in the wilderness, just enjoying each other and the water. The only part that freaked me out at this point was the fact that there were no trespassing signs posted on a few trees on our way down the river. The river we were on was close to the road and led to the national park. That was to our left. To the right was a wilderness that stretched on for miles and miles. We get to a point that was deeper than the rest. I would say probably about ten feet. We were laughing and joking when suddenly we hear rustling to our right. We could not see much. The bank was overgrown with ferns or some other type of foliage that grew much taller than either of us were. Even taller than the height of a full-grown man. All the blood drains in my face, and we are both paralyzed in fear as we watch a tall human-like figure on two feet, holding its arms out much like a raptor does. It passes through the foliage. We could not see it, just the shadow of it. Of course, I am on the side closer to whatever the freak this thing is. Two thoughts went through my head as this was happening, but I did not dare to make a sound. It was a person. I thought about the no trespassing signs, and I was terrified that I was going to have to sit here and beg for my life from some crazy freaking outback hillbilly hunter or something. That is when I noticed I could see the outline of fur all over the body. My next thought, a bear. This scared me even more, because animals like this have no sense of wrong or right. At least if it were a person, I would have the chance to beg for my life and possibly be successful in doing so. A bear would just rip us both apart and would not see anything wrong with it. We would be just lunch. A few minutes pass, still complete silence. I look over to my friend on edge and uneasy, but I manage to whisper and ask her if she wants to get out of the water and walk the rest of the way. She of course replies yes. We paddle ourselves through the water with our arms until we make it to the bank towards the road. It was about a five to ten minute walk up this steep hill, but oh well. It was better than staying down there and, you know, seeing whatever that thing was. We walked until eventually her mom pulls up and says that she had the feeling to come pick us up, because we had not called yet. It was not until after that we realized this was not a person. It was covered in fur. I do not really think it was a bear either. It walked on two legs perfectly and even ran. By the way, we ended up doing this in the same area twice after this. Once a few months after this happened. However, we never saw this thing again. I grew up in Oregon. As most Oregonians do, we did a lot of camping. One particular trip, we were down at our favorite site on the east side of Hills Creek Reservoir. I don't remember the exact date, but I was probably 14 to 15 years old, around 1999. My tent was fairly close to the water, maybe 40 feet back, while my parents' tent with my younger siblings was about 200 feet farther back into the woods. 
I was maybe 15 feet from the fire, and our kitchen was set up at about 30 feet west of me on a raised area. Everyone went to bed, while I stayed up around an hour longer with my dog. We eventually went to bed, and I got all cozy. Suddenly my dog perks up, on alert. I wasn't too worried, as I could still hear the frogs and the crickets. Then, everything went dead silent. The frogs and the crickets both stopped. I could hear something coming through the woods from the direction of the lake. It sounded large. I thought maybe a bear or a big deer. My dog starts growling, and I do my best to keep her quiet. The walking sound gets to the raised area of the camp where our kitchen is. I hear some of the stuff move around. I manage to slowly unzip part of the tent window. It's very dark, not much of a moon, and the fire was dying. But I could vaguely see something. Then, a very large figure steps down from the raised area, about a four to five foot drop, and walks directly toward my tent. My heart is pounding. My dog starts shaking while growling, but thankfully, my dog doesn't bark. The figure moves past my tent within five to six feet and makes its way up the road back through the woods with huge, broad steps, each sounding a deep thump. About ten minutes later, the frogs and the crickets come back. I'm nearly a hundred percent sure that I saw Bigfoot. At the time that this happened, I didn't really know what was going on. I just had the impression that the woods outside of my house were very creepy. I only recently decided that I think it was a Bigfoot after doing a lot of research and seeing a lot of similarities between my own story and other people's stories who have had encounters. My family started building a house in rural South Georgia when I was 12, and we moved in once it was finished a few months after I turned 13. It was a few miles outside of the town we lived in, a plantation town on the Florida-Georgia border. We lived there until I graduated from high school in 2013. The first thing I don't actually remember happening, but my dad told me about it a few months ago. Apparently the first night my family slept in the new house, when none of the windows had curtains or blinds yet, I came into my parents' bedroom and asked to sleep with them. I did this a lot as a little kid, but it was pretty unusual by the time I was 13. My dad said that I told him I saw a face looking into my window, and that it scared me. The rest of all of this I remember pretty clearly. One time, my sister and I were jumping on a trampoline in our backyard, and all of a sudden we heard something whistle at us. It came from the side of the house, near our garage. I can't explain exactly why it was so terrifying, but it scared us to death. We jumped off the trampoline and sprinted inside, slamming the door behind us. It was just so weird, because we had already met the neighbors at that point, and we didn't have many, and it didn't make sense that they would hide from us and whistle. They would have just walked up to us. Plus, we hadn't seen any people approaching. My sister has told me that she saw something hiding behind the trash can next to the house, but I didn't see that. She doesn't remember the whistling part, but I swear I'll never forget it. It was just so bizarre. I think that she might have seen something and remembered what she saw, while I only remembered what I heard. Sometimes I think that I remember seeing a dog or something run to the side of the house from the woods, like, super fast. But I don't know for sure if that actually happened. Anyway, that was one of the single freakiest things that has ever happened to me. I know it sounds mundane, but in the moment, it was bone-chilling, and I still get chills thinking about it. Anyway, after that, my dad decided to build a privacy fence around our backyard, and we got two dogs a little bit after that. The yard was pretty big, and my sister and I were both pretty athletic. We would put on headphones and play in the yard while we listened to music, 
kick a soccer ball, run laps around the yard, play fetch with the dogs, things like that. Sometimes we did this with each other, and sometimes by ourselves. At night, I always thought I would see some sort of cone-shaped head looking at me over the fence. But if I did a double take to make sure that I wasn't seeing things, the head would be gone. Other times, I'd be out in the yard by myself, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I would feel like I was being watched. This was always scarier to me than when I thought I saw things. I swear it was like I knew that something was watching me, and it was overwhelming. I would stop what I was doing immediately, and go inside. This happened all the time. Other times, I'd be shooting basketball in our driveway, or going for a jog through the neighborhood. It was a developing subdivision, not a house out in the woods by itself, and I would get that same freaky feeling. After we got our licenses, I think I actually saw one while I was driving. We were with another friend who also lived outside the city limits, on the way to her house. Our friend was in the front seat, and my sister was in the back seat. We were coming around this bend not too far away from our neighborhood, and all of a sudden my friend and I saw this super tall brown thing on the side of the road. It was very tall, ancient. It looked like a really old man with a long beard and a distorted face. It was slender too, not bulky. My friend and I saw it at the same time and both said, what was that? I guess my sister was on her phone or something because I remember that she asked us what we saw, but we'd already passed it by the time she looked out her window. My friend and I both agreed that it was a man in a mask trying to scare people but I don't think either of us believed that. From then on out, every time I drove past that spot, I would try to see if there were any weird trees or something that we maybe could have thought was a person with a mask, but it just looked like a regular patch of woods. Another time, a different friend was playing with us outside as the sun was setting. We were walking down this empty road that no houses had been built on yet, and to our left was some woods with miles and miles of ATV trails. All of a sudden, he just goes, run. We didn't ask questions. We all sprinted back to the house. When we got back, he was shaken up, and he said that he saw something, but he never did tell us what it was. My sister and I are both grown now, and our parents sold the house and moved out of state when we were in college, so we haven't been back for years. But after I did some research and started putting some pieces together, I asked my sister if she thought the house we grew up in was creepy, and she said it absolutely was. She would feel like she was being watched in the yard too, and remembers seeing shadows moving in the woods. She said she'll never forget seeing something hiding behind the trash can that one time. She even independently googled Bigfoot sightings in the town we grew up in, and found an article about a rash of sightings that happened while we were in middle school. Anyway, we both believe that that's why we were so creeped out by the woods outside of our house, that there was probably a Bigfoot, maybe more than one, living out there. I never connected all of these weird things until I started listening to Bigfoot podcasts and stuff like that, but now that I've put the pieces together, I feel like I can't unsee it. A couple of years ago, my boyfriend and I were in the woods, near a dam. It was about 3 a.m., and we were just pulling an adventurous all-nighter and enjoying each other's company. The area is located in the south shore of Massachusetts. As I've said, there's a dam with a stone wall and an area with picnic tables nearby. There's a path that goes into the woods. Lots of people fish here, and it seems like a pretty benign place. I've been here many times during the day, but never at night. We made our way to the path and went into the woods. We found a stone bench and were there for quite a while, when suddenly we heard what sounded like a large grunt or exhale. We stayed silent for a moment and waited until we heard it again grunting and exhaling repeatedly. 
My boyfriend said, Whatever it is has big lungs. We could hear it moving, not toward us, but almost as if it were passing us to the left, then to the right. It sounded close enough to get to us, but it never showed itself. We didn't run out, but proceeded at a regular pace down the path that would bring us out. The noises continued as we left and sounded farther and farther away, so it didn't follow us. There are certainly bears in Massachusetts, but not in this area. I even went on Google Maps to see if there was a farm nearby or something, but there wasn't. I cannot understand what this was, but whatever it was, sounded beastly.